Amen. 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 Alicia would be the only one. <laughs> How many of you would be happy if the rapture hit right now? Amen. Would you, would you be happy, Michelle? Amen. Amen. Jerry, I want to thank you for taking up tonight. Lord willing, next Wednesday will be Sister Liz. Then, then Deacon Dan, no, no, Pastor Shirley, then Deacon Dan. So stand on your feet as unto the Lord as Brother Jerry comes to share the word of God. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Let me ask you, Fussy Amen. Amen. Open the ears to hear. What the Lord has to say, Lord. We just thank you, open the ears up, the hearts to receive it, Lord. We just thank you and praise you for it. We give you praise, honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, preach it, brother. Yes. Janet Hagan started out with his relationship with the Lord. The Lord is to the new way of coming in. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Amen. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he receives the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Now, he goes on to explain what the fruit of the the fruit of the earth is. The fruit of the earth is the souls that are coming in from the people who Amen. preach to them. When they come in, that is his fruit. Amen. It's coming in. Amen. And Bless him, God. Take your time, bro. Take your time. This is John, Big John, chapter 4, 1 through 7. The Pharisees heard that Jesus, Jesus was getting and baptizing more de disciples than John. Although, in fact, it was not Jesus who was baptizing but his disciples. When the Lord heard, learned of this, he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Mm. Now he had to grow th go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground. And Jesus tried, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour when a Samaritan woman came, drop, came to draw water. Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into a town to buy food. Now, how many times have we sat down beside a person that doesn't know the Lord or walked by them? Come on, Jerry. And the Lord nudges you, say something. Give them a word from, what, from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Speak to them. Come on, Jerry. How many times have you heard that? Wow. That is the voice of the Lord telling you. With a relationship with God, you will know that voice is from the Lord. Amen. Not just say, what was that? What was that voice of that call? You would know that was Jesus if you had a relationship with him. Come on, Amen. Amen. Because in order for us to do things, do the works of the Lord, we have to know his voice when, he, talk, when he talks to Amen. us. Good wisdom. If we don't know his voice, we can't move and we can't do what he wants us to do. There you go. Because we're questioning what we should do. Amen. Who said that? Where did it come from? How shall we move? 
How should we stand beside them or in front of them? What to do? He will give you wisdom and guidance in order to do that. In the Samaritan woman, he sat down beside her and asked her questions. And he gave her wisdom and he gave her what to do. Yeah. And the Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and drink. And I am a Samaritan woman. Oops, I got the wrong line here. Woman, you are a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? Yes. Now, what does that leave him for? Leaves Jesus an opening for him to talk to her about Amen. drinking, about how he can give her living water instead of the water that he she wants. And she says, how can you give me living water? Because our ancestors dug this well. How can you give me living water? He says that the living water will come within me and it will be yours. So she takes all that he has told her to the town. He goes in and tells everybody, look at this guy. He told me what I did because he did tell her about the men that she was with yeah. Yeah. and that what she had done. So if he doesn't talk to her and tell her about herself, tell her about the things, you must hear what God's telling you about the person that you're talking to, about the Lord. There you go. If you don't know his voice, you can't tell that person. Come on. That's right, George. You can't say something that makes them turn to God. Amen. That's what the purpose of is relationship, relationship with God. Yes, sir. Because we are supposed to reach out to the lost. And you know that if you don't reach out to them, they're lost. That's right. They're not going to heaven. That's right. Without you being having a relationship with the Lord, it can't happen. Amen. Amen. Let's see. Acts chapter 6. That's the next one. Yeah, that's the next one. In those days, let's see, 1 through to 5. Let's see, it's 1 to 4. Okay. In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Grecian Jews among them complained against Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So, so the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to do to neglect the ministry of the Word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers, Choose seven men from the, among you who are no, known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. We will turn these, this responsibility over to them and we'll give one of uh, our attention to prayer and the ministry of the Word. Now, how do these disciples know what to do? They listened to God and the Lord. Yeah. They had a relationship with God. Yes, sir. They knew instinctively what to do. Amen. Because God had put it in their spirits. They listened to what was in their spirits and they did what they were told to do Amen. by God. Amen. 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 Without them knowing what to do, can you imagine? What are we going to do? You know, yeah. and that is a big question. Yes, sir. When you have all these people that are not being fed the right way, they didn't say that they had prayed about the Lord. They already knew. Amen. Because God put it in their spirits and their hearts. Amen. What to do. The proposal that they proposed, the whole group, pleased the whole group, the, ch the chose step of man. Well, they chose the apostles, and they prayed and laid hands on them. Mm. So they went out and fed the people 
Yes. The ones that weren't getting fed, they put them in where they were supposed to for each group. Yes, sir. They needed to have relationship with God, with Jesus Christ, in order to be able to do these things. Amen. Acts 20, 32. Let's see. Acts 20. 20, 32. 32. Now I commit you to God. And in this word of his grace, each can build you up. Which can build you up. Now I commit you to God, I started over again, to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Amen. I have not coveted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. So this is God, God telling these men, how to build yourselves up so that you have strength, spiritual strength, spiritual not physical strength, strength it will be Amen. spiritual strength, to build yourselves up so that you can receive your inheritance from God. He puts that in there so that you build you up and give inheritance and be sanctified. The love of God is in there. He wants them to be have an inheritance. Yes. But the apostles. Yes. And we thank you for it, Lord, because how did they know that? Did they did they get something from the Lord, maybe? Did they get a word from God? Apostle Paul also at twenty four says, however, I consider my life worth nothing to me. If only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. Amen. The task of testifying to the gospel of God and his grace. He is a true follower of God. He wants to preach the gospel to the lost. Yes. And he wants to do as much as he can before God takes him home. Amen. That's what we should do, is Amen. reach out to the lost as much as we can Come on, Jerry. before we go home to be with the Lord. Amen. And I, I don't see it anywhere in the Bible that says we got to keep looking for Jesus coming. we got to keep reaching to the lost, there you not go. just looking for Jesus is coming. That's right. Because we may live, miss someone that needs Jesus. If we miss them, we're not, we're not, we're looking up there. We're not down here. We should be looking for the lost. Amen. And preaching to them, bringing them in to Jesus Christ. Amen. We say. Amen. Amen. Good lesson. Romans 1 5. Through him, for his name's sake, we received grace. And apostleship to call people from among all the Gentiles mm. to obedience that comes from faith. Amen. And you also are among those who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. Amen. So he's he's saying, Hey, you're mine. You belong to me. You belong to Jesus. He's called. Apostleship to call people from among all the Gentiles. Now, all the Gentiles were saved. So he's reaching out to those who aren't saved. So that if we're obedient and do what God wants us to do in faith, yes, reaching sir. out to the lost, Amen. reaching out to the lost, many people will be saved. Amen. Well, this is good right here. I am not ashamed of the gospel. 
because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For in the gospel, rich, um, righteousness, I got it, righteousness, mine's split in two here, so I, righteousness from God is revealed, a righteous that, righteousness that is by faith from the first to the last. Just as it is written, the, the righteous will live by faith. If we live by faith, we'll be able to have enough grace and enough the relationship, we have the relationship with God to reach out to the lost. And it takes faith, faith to reach out for the lost because we, if we have to receive words from the Lord, yes, sir. what to talk to them about, how to bring them around to the Jesus, because there is a right way to bring a person to Jesus, and there's a wrong way. Amen. If we look and say it's our own way of doing it, then we're going to turn them off. They won't work. They won't follow. But if we do it the Lord's way, and when he gives us the word, there comes the relationship we have with God so that we can receive the word to practice bringing in the lost. Amen. And they will come in because God knows the right words to speak. He knows the right words to speak. Amen. Awesome. Okay, 2 Corinthians 6, 4, 6. And 7. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness. Mm made his light shine in our hearts yeah. to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Wow. It tells us here, he's going to give us the light, which yeah. is the word of God, light. to reach the lost. Amen. Hallelujah. He knows how to reach the lost. Yes, we does. have to listen to the voice he is speaking yes, to us. Sir. And he gives us the knowledge, and we will receive the glory of God Thank in you, Lord. the face of Christ. Thank you, Lord. And then in 7 it says, But we have this treasure in, in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God, from God and not from us. Amen. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despair, yes. persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our bodies the death of Christ, Amen. so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our bodies. Amen. For we who are alive are always being given Jeez. over to death for Jesus' sake. There's a price we have to pay for reaching out for the lost. Oh, yeah. Come on, he has given us treasures and blessings. That's blessings, really. Treasures is blessing. He's going to bless you whether you're here on earth or in heaven because he's given us that charge to reach the lost. If we don't reach the lost, Come on, and we miss it, we miss a blessing. Amen. Amen. So true. The price is persecution. And boy, do I know about persecution. When I was little, I got born again. And the next day after that was school, and I was seven years old. I went in a class. And they were throwing spit rods in class. And the nun comes in and says, who threw a spit rod? And they said, he did. Well, I said that. I, I didn't realize that I could not tell any lies, but I could tell the truth. Amen. After that, I was that at a recess. I was met outside down at the bottom of the steps. We had about six or seven steps to go down to get to the sidewalk. And I met with one kid and another kid came up behind me and they beat me up. Whoa. Because I told them. 
And it was like that for about two or three months. They chased me down and beat me up. Wow. Wow. And the Lord finally gave me places to hide. <laughs> so that I didn't get beat up. Because I said, God, this is going to be, this is getting rough. This is really rough. So, and then one, one time I was running and they had a porch in the back. It was about two oh, feet, about two God. feet high. And I crawled underneath the porch and they looked underneath there. It was only four feet deep. And they looked under there, they couldn't see me. They went on. And I'll tell you, if they can't see four feet underneath the porch, God had to blind their eyes Amen. so Amen. they couldn't Thank see you, me. Jesus. So it was really something. And then when I got into high school, God supplied the bodyguard for me. Praise God. When the first day of class came around, big guy in class kind of put his arm around me and said, hey, buddy, let's go. And he stuck to me like fly paper to a fly. <laughs> And it was all through high school. Amen. One, each year, it was a different person that would come up because they, that person would go leave, and another person would come in. Wow. And they would come, hey, buddy, let's go. And I didn't say nothing to them. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say, hey, come yeah, here, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They come to me. And I thank God for that, you know. Amen. And it's, it's just something. God's good. And I always, when I would come home, I had a, a private place that I would go. It was in a closet, and there was all kinds of clothes hanging there, and I got between the clothes and went back in the back of the closet, and nobody was there, but I know God was there. Amen. And I talked to him, and I cried my eyes out, and I said, God, why don't the kids like me? Why? Why? What's going on, Lord? And he, and he just consoled me, and just gave me all kinds of love, and, and but that was my relationship with God. Amen. I was doing what He wanted me to do. Yes, sir. And He became my best buddy. Hallelujah. And if you can find a place, get in there, or a room, get in a play, private, private place. Yes. Find a place that, where you can be by yourself, and then just sit there and listen to God's voice. Amen. He. You say, God, I seek your face. I'm here. I'm listening to you. Amen. And he'll speak to you. Amen. He will. Really. Yes, you will. call him and seek his face. He and will. he will speak to you. Amen. Amen. Wow. Will. It's really, uh, what you call relieving and peace and joy yeah. in his presence. The love of God comes in that area where you're at. Amen. And one time I experienced, in a Bible study, I experienced his love like a big ball of cotton that was coming in that come right over top of me and settled on me for about five minutes. And I'm sitting there like, oh boy, this is neat, man. This is, really, this is something because it's just that love just coming. Sure, sure. And just beautiful. And it just raised up, just a slow. And I told the, the teacher of the Bible class about it. And she says, oh, we got to have a testament. Somebody else had it, too. Somebody has it. We have to have it. Uh, what do you call it? Confirmation of it. Jerry just had a uh, lady on, way down on the end of a row of chairs. And she says, I just had the same experience. <laughs> so there was, there it was. There Amen. was a testimony Amen. of what I experienced. And it's really something. And I get to Kenneth Hagin. He talks about the earth giving up its fruit. He says that there will be an overwhelming fire of the Holy Spirit come over this earth that none can describe, Amen. none can fathom the love and the fire you go. that will come over this earth. That's the fruit that's coming up. And we need to be ready when those yes, people sir. are ready to reach out for them. Reach out to them. 
I'm going to tell you, reach out to them Amen. and reach bring out. them into yes. the fold. Yes. Save their souls. Draw them in. Save souls. God is waiting for the fruit yes. to come forth. And I'm waiting for the fruit too, because I like to see my grandchildren saved, my sister, yeah. my wife's cousins, yes, sir. and to come into the fold. Amen. And I'm looking for that, really, for them to come in. Because they're out as far as, not as far as they could be, but about halfway as far as they could be. And I, I like to see them to come in. Yes, sir. I have talked to them about the Lord, and I get this. Yes, I know about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, they turn away from me. And, but I know that when I speak to them about the Lord, it's a little bit of, imprint in their minds. God is putting it in their minds. A little seed. Yes, a seed. Yeah. And each time each one of you tells your relation about God, it's a seed you're planting. And each time you talk to them again, it's a little more water on that seed you put up. You pray that God puts somebody to put more water on that seed that talks to them because they're going to have a, you're going to have a harvest. One man waters and you plant. You plant and the better waters. Amen. Because God is looking for his word to be fulfilled. Yes. These may be the last days, but yes, he's going he's to outdo the devil. Hey. He's going to out, out save the devil. Amen. He's going to save more people in these last days than you ever, ever heard. You better believe it. Amen. You've never seen anything like it. Amen. And it's not just going to be here in the United States. It's going to be worldwide, worldwide. all the way around. Yes, sir. And we don't know how long it's going to take for that to happen. Yes, sir. It's coming. God told E. Hagan that it was coming. And he has a good relationship. And he, well, he did. He's, he passed away now, but he had a good relationship with the Lord. And we believe and receive those souls in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you and praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the souls that are coming Amen. in. Souls that are coming in. We give you souls, praise, honor, and glory, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the souls that are harvesting in. Yes, Lord. And let you be the soil, the soil. that the seed is yes. planted in. Let you be the soil, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In their minds, we just thank you and praise you for that, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you and we praise you, Lord. Let us all live by faith, not by sight. Amen. By faith. We have faith in God. Yes. Reach out Reach to out. God and relationship. Remember, relationship counts big time with God. Yes. He loves relationships yes. with you. Come on, brother. He wants you to That's talk powerful. to him. And be with him. Powerful. And it could mean the salvation of someone you know because you had a relationship with God. If you don't have that relationship, that person you know or is going to know won't get saved. That's right. Come on, Jerry. Because he's assigned to us people that we are to reach out to. So, amen. Thank amen. You. amen.